Letterbox sent out its 2023 movie review to all of its users, and while all these 2023 rap videos are still coming out, even two weeks into the new year, Letterbox sent it out on Saturday, January 6th. Uh, wow, what a day to send it out. And we are going to look at it. I'm going to take a look at mine. I'm going to do it live, react, tell you the things that I love about Letterbox and the specific genres that stand out to me and the things that I look for in my stats because I do love data and I do love movies. And that's what makes Letterbox so amazing is that it can help you track your favorite movies or track movies you want to see or, or tell you how much of a certain genre you're watching, how much of a certain director you're watching, all this kind of stuff. Uh, and it really kind of gives you your uh, fingerprint on how, how much you love movies and, and what your year looked like. And there are a couple things that can totally ruin your end of year stats. And we're going to talk all about that and more. Now let's jump into it. Um, this is what it looks like. A letterbox year review for Dylan. That's me. So 100, 100 movies logged. Pretty good number. Um, I always try to hit at least 100. There was a couple years where I was hitting the 150, you know, in back-to-back -back years. I believe it was 17, 18, 19. And then with pandemic, those numbers were high again. But yeah, cool. 100 movies, not bad. 201 hours watched. Insane. Uh, most watched actor, Tom Cruise. Now, I'm not necessarily a, a massive Tom Cruise fan, but this goes into kind of your letterbox here. If you're going to watch the Harry Potter series, Daniel Radcliffe will more than likely be your most watched actor. Or maybe Emma Watson because you watched a couple other movies. This is what happened to me when I was really wanting to be like, you know, what? I'm going to go see this new Mission Impossible movie. I really need to get on board with that. So I watched the series. Because of that, we got bunch of Tom Cruise and then I try to go back and watch old movies I believe I watched Rain Man for the first time last year you know Tom Cruise so it just keeps adding up as far as director Christopher Nolan this is right on this doesn't surprise me Oppenheimer came out of course I saw that twice uh, we'll talk about that in a second yeah I mean I feel like I'm always wanting to throw on a Christopher Nolan movie whether it's to prepare for Oppenheimer or just because it's on TV or I'm like dude it's it's Monday let's throw on the dark night who cares but yeah, Christopher Nolan, not surprised to me. Okay, highly rated 2023 films. Uh, I believe I watched 23, 23 or 26 movies that came out in 2023, and these were definitely in my top three. Oppenheimer, Across the Spider-Verse, Past Lives. Saw Oppenheimer twice, saw Across the Spider-Verse twice, Past Lives, only saw it once, but absolutely these were my favorite movies of the year. Um, that doesn't surprise me. Look at this. It shows you your, your busiest week of watching movies, which was mid-June for me for some reason. Yeah, then you see some lulls where it's like, dang, I must have been busy. must have been out of town. must have been doing whatever. Uh, most watched day of 2023. I spent 19 Fridays, Friday nights presumably, watching movies. Not too bad. 52 Fridays in a year probably, right? And 19 watching movies. Not terrible. Not terrible. You know, taking it easy. Grown up a little bit, you know, that's what we do. First watch of the year, La La Land. Must have kicked off the year with that. Uh, ended with Spirited Away. That was my 100th movie. I had never seen it before. But this is another category, talking about the difference between these two movies, that I look at a lot, is I hope that my rewatch to new watch is about 75%. Like, I want to say that for every four movies I watch, only one of them was one I'd seen before. Because maybe you're showing someone, maybe it's a comfort movie, maybe it's like, oh man, I really need to rewatch that. I try not to rewatch movies as much as I want to, because that's always the tendency. It's like, I'm going to throw on something I know, rather than take on this new, you know, end of the world Netflix movie that everyone seems to be talking about that kind of feels like a chore to watch if you haven't seen it by this point. So yeah, there's that. Uh, Diary Milestones, my 50th movie, Escape Room. That was a little guilty pleasure watch over the summer. Most watched theme, high speed and special ops. Again, this goes with the fact that I watched the Mission Impossible movies. So, and that was in there. I also did try to go through and watch the Fast and Furious movies to prepare for 10. And that was a feat I did not complete. I think I stopped at about seven. But again, that adds to that category. And then most watched nano genre, which we'll get into nano genres in a second. They give customized stats that are pretty cool, showing what we did every year. Like I said, you can toggle through any year as long as you've been doing Letterbox. I signed up in 2017 and it's crazy how, how much it's blown up. But yeah. Okay. So, okay. More 2023 movies that I loved. Um, Killers of a Flower Moon. I, I rated The Flash four stars and I... I remember I felt like, dude, this movie was fun. Why are people mad? And because I had fun, it was it was fine. Like I, I, you have to realize that 
the DC is like you're kind of just hoping to to see home runs on a team that just strikes out all the time. And if someone hits a even like a double or a ground rule double, you're gonna stand up and clap because it's like, dang, that was that's great. Look look what we did. And I felt that with the Flash. I thought it was a a fun time. Other movies, uh, The Holdovers, great movie. Theater Camp, excellent. Flora and Son, really great too. If you liked the movie Sing Street, talk about that movie quite a bit here. We've talked about it on the network. It's a great movie. Same director, Irish film about music and uh, a mother and son relationship. It's really beautiful, really great. And also another, it's a cool movie experience. I went to an independent theater in Santa Monica and it was the only place it was playing in LA at that time. And it was just so cool. There was like, it's it was it's a theater where it's like you kind of make a point to go to anyone who's there. Like it's they intentionally like sought out to see this movie. So anytime you get an experience like that, it's pretty cool. Dang man, you gotta you gotta bump those numbers up. Uh, movies I watched twice: Ocean's Eleven and Oppenheimer. Ocean's Eleven. Okay, listen, we didn't go to Vegas as much this year as we've gone in the last couple years. If you got that Vegas itch? There's no better movie to watch than Ocean's Eleven. There's a lot of great movies set in Vegas. Twenty One, Casino, Vegas Vacation, even is a good time. The Hangover, of course, but nothing is as cool as Ocean's Eleven, and so. I'm not surprised that I watched that twice this year. I'll probably watch it again this year. It's maybe one of the most rewatchable movies of all time. I, I, you could go that far. It breaks you down to the countries of movies you watch. It'll even tell you, like, if I, uh, if I click on it. Yeah, it'll tell me the movies. These must have either been shot in Germany for a second or somehow produced in Germany. Yeah, pretty cool. Themes and nano genres, explosive and action-packed heroes versus villains. Maybe I throw on some Marvel movies here and there. Heist and thrilling action, song and dance, thrillers, murder mysteries, emotionally captivating fantasy storytelling. But also you can click on it and it'll tell you. Oh yeah, we got one Harry Potter. Oh, Barbie in there. Hunger Games. Um, everything everywhere. So good. Um, nano genres, death, stunts, and formulaic. Yeah, I'm telling you. Yeah, look at this. Mission Impossible, Fast and Furious. It's exactly what I said. Dial of Destiny, John Wick 4 as well in there. Okay, so here's my watches, rewatches. 40%. And because I hit 100 movies, um, the percentage is, is dead on. I watched 40 movies that I'd already seen in the last year. So, again, want to target that at about 75%. That's the goal. Mad Damon. There's that Ocean's Eleven. See if that's if they count that twice. Directors, Christopher Nolan, Tim Burton, director of The Mission Impossibles. Uh, Chris Columbus, he directed Home Alone. So, he's always going to be on my list if I watch that movie every year. Like, Chris Columbus. Will always be on uh, this list, Rob Reiner. But yeah, dude, it'll even tell you the camera operators that you most watched in 2023. It's insane. I could find Colin Anderson somewhere on you know LinkedIn or Instagram and just be like, "Hey, bro, just want to let you know, I you're the camera operator I saw most this year." And gosh, thank you, thank you for your for your hard work. Your most liked review, four likes. That's what we call a banger. If you get four likes on Letterbox, dude, you are a god. Um, most liked list, my top favorites of 2022. I do need to make that for 23. It still feels like there's so many. I've only seen 26. Like, that's pretty low um, as far as how many movies came out, especially streaming and and all that one, all the stuff and the ones you missed the theaters. Um, Highest average across the Spider-Verse. That was huge this year. Lowest, Winnie the Pooh. That was that movie, the horror movie made off the public domain of Winnie the Pooh. Pretty insane. Uh, Barbie, most popular. Most obscure, nothing like the holidays. I really loved watching that one this year. Uh, but that's the most obscure. That's surprising. But yep, yeah, here, here they all are. All in one spot. Yeah, decent, decent year in uh, in watching movies. Yeah, dude, look at this. I got a map to tell you like Mexico, Triangle of Sadness. Come on, what the heck's going on? What do we got here? Greece. What's our Greece movie? Triangle of Sadness. Jeez, Japan. Spirited Away, Fast and Furious. Yes, so much culture in those Fast and Furious movies. UK, Ireland, Flora and Son. That's what I'm telling you, so good. Give that one a watch. Seek it out. Spain. Fast and Furious. See, look that. Say what you will about Fast and Furious. It's it's very worldly, you know. Um, yeah, that's good. Tells me the highest rated films I've yet to see. Definitely some I need to be checking out. Excited for the year of uh, 2024. 2023 was a great year. Hopefully next year the uh, numbers will be up. We'll watch 
less rewatches. And uh, yeah, it's funny because AMC, you know, you go and you see the great Nicole Kidman enter the building and, you know, tell you about the movie watching experience of AMC. And at the end, you know, the, she delivers the AMC line. AMC theaters. Yeah, I can't do an Australian accent. We make movies better. All that to say, Letterboxd makes movies better. It's, um, I was thinking about that. It really does. Like it, it's when you want to really, you know, see your movies as data and see what your friends are saying about movies and, and, you know, reading interesting articles, like the way they've built this website now and the social media, it seems to be everywhere. And it's so cool that with all the, they're now on red carpets and the biggest stars are talking about letterbox and how much it means to people who love movies. So, uh, I'm grateful for it and I'm always hyped when a new friend hops on it and, doesn't just use it like for a couple days but like actually stays on it it's sick because then you can really i don't know it it makes it so you can be like holy crap you saw this movie what did you or why did you rate it so low um or or it might give you insight to be like oh dang this is someone who loves this movie like why did you love that i don't get it it didn't land for me um it's great i love letterboxd and excited for 2024 hopefully uh new horizons seeing movies seeing the world, and living life. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to like, subscribe, um, leave a comment, do all that good stuff, and follow me on Letterboxd. I will follow back. There's, I'm not worried about Stranger Danger on Letterboxd. It's good, it's good to see all these perspectives. See you soon.